since I don't let go of things very easily, we're going to go back through and find the mistakes that I made on Tuesday night in the, uh, the screw jack. So I was able to find a better scan, not just the picture off my cell phone. And so this, this page has been revised with that better picture. And I'm going to work from the, um, the photo uh, view, viewer or whatever so that I can zoom around a little bit more and zoom in and out. Um, but there is a, a PDF and there is the, the PNG file that you can uh, download off of Canvas if, uh, if you want. All right, so one of the things was the, uh, the length. And over on this side, I think I, I grabbed the 11-inch 11, 11 60 thousandths and the height was actually 7.75. All right, so that's one of the corrections, and we'll just kind of go through and verify numbers. So um, maybe as a practice, and we've talked about going through iterations of design, that um, pretty much this falls into the category of uh, we built these, and now it needs to be updated to a more modern look, or we're changing the marketing on it. Uh, changing the manufacturing process, maybe we're getting away from the uh, the casting and we're doing more more CNC. What is the the new design for manufacture? Maybe we're staying in the casting, but we picked a new material, and that new material has different properties or lighter but stronger properties. However, uh, we work through it, and it's going to change some of our machining manufacturing processes. So what I wasn't uh, didn't pick up or clue in on is every one of these little V surfaces is usually a surface call out. But if this is a cast part, you would want to call out which items actually get machined so that this has, well, the angle maybe not so much, but it'll look nice. And since we're going to make this face perpendicular, I'm sorry, uh, parallel to the bottom, we might as well go ahead and uh, put the uh, put a machine surface on on a couple of those faces interior it's going to be part of the process to, to bore that out or in the case of the casting then maybe this is part of the core and we have to drill for the uh, for the tapping uh, mechanism All right so to get that square thread there again being that it's one and a quarter that's not a tap that I want to run in there so chances are we're going to fixture this somehow uh, to where this is held in um, uh, turning center, the uh, lathe, uh, that we can maintain, we establish this nice flat face, and then uh, we put that up against our tooling plate, our, our, uh, our chuck, our, um, in, the, uh, in the turning center, and then this geometry is, is created as parallel and to the angle. We drill through, and then I would finish bore those square threads would not want to run a one and a quarter tap through there. There's just too much tooling pressure. So we need something that uh, we have a little bit more control. So just kind of thinking through the manufacturing processes of how how is this going to, uh, to get made on top of uh, some of the things that we've already um, gone into. So uh, one of the things that, that popped out was they have the light neural, or they have kind of the crisscross like a neural. But it's not really called out as as a neural. So what is the the texture there? And um, you know, so if we we call it a um, a fine neural, or um, it doesn't well even on that size, that could still be a coarse neural. Uh, but we would have to make a decision on how we want to call that out on the drawing, or reference to that uh, to that finish. So then I look at the four place decimals for the uh, the through hole and think. Wow, that's really nice, but the um, the lever is five eighths. So we have sixty thousandths of clearance. Why do I need to hold four place decimals? So the reality check there goes in and says, you know, six eighty eight, six eighty seven as a as a number, that's going to be fine. Other than than taking it out to the fourth decimal, so hey, use an eleven sixteenths drill. I'm not going to measure that that whole bore unless we get into the fit that I'm going to press in this um, this lever, and it's going to be permanent in the fixture. Well, if it's a cross hole, well, I don't really need to drill both ways because one of them's press fit. We're not going to utilize the other one. All right, so if we're at a, a, a heavy, you know, this is a 60 thousandths clearance uh, slip fit, I really don't need a four-place decimal there. So we go through that uh, that process. We talked about the 265 by uh, 0.75 deep that threw me. Um, so if I tended towards that number, 
the 265 number, this would be closer to a 5 16 24, I believe. Um, and then a 5 16 18 uh, goes to the to the smaller number. And the 3B callout uh, for fit, basically what they're doing is saying, we want this tight enough and tolerant enough that as this is rotating, this screw isn't going to go anywhere. Well, I could almost achieve the uh, the same thing by staying with a 2B bit that's going to make a cheaper screw and um, and tapped hole and red Loctite it. Or at least blue Loctite it and, you know, it's not going to vibrate out. So maybe there's a better process than um, going to that that tighter class of, uh, class of fit. So that's another decision that we have to make. And, and then looking at the uh, the groove, the top view doesn't quite represent, or let's see, yeah, I guess it does. Now that I, I stop and look at it, these are the uh, the legs of the, um, um, the the ribs, and then this is the the groove. Well, they show these at kind of a of an angle. I don't know that I can generate those that way. So when I'm looking at the geometry, I'm processing through how I want to do this five degree uh, downing. All right, so that would be one that um, we're going to, uh, to add tonight. All right, is getting that groove in. And basically, that's like a, a grip, a non, making it a non-slip surface that whatever this is lifting, it kind of bites into those, those ribs. And then as you're turning it, the cap is uh, stationary and the, um, uh, the adjusting screw is able to run, run up and down and remain uh, while the cap remains stationary and the base remains stationary. All right, so just kind of thinking through that process. All right, so let's hit the uh, the first couple of these and see how far we get. All right, so from the assembly, we put those items in. We did a little bit of the um, the mate geometry um, to where, you know, getting this to be able to spin. I added, I added a configuration. So one was default and one was dynamic, and all the dynamic did was allow me to turn and see that this was going to go up an inch. If I go back to default, it pulls it back in. All right. And then I know that uh, this looked a little long, and the clue was that, wow, that, um, that adjusting screw did not make it through the bore very far. Um, so since I jumped to that, um, that larger value, this would be a good time. Right-click on the part or from the um, assembly tree, right-click, and say, just go ahead and open that part. So I don't have to go back through the file explorer. I don't have to go hunt for it. It's right there in front of me. I can open it up from the assembly or the subassembly and get directly to that part. All right. So as I suspected, the 11.06 should actually have been the 7.75. Okay. And the test here is I went through and I did the whole build. Uh, we um, have everything pretty much uh, where I want it. And the test is when I hit the rebuild, do I get errors or does it just adjust? Whew, just adjust it. <laughs> and there's, there's places where I can anticipate errors. And then there's places that, hey, it just, it just happened. I'm going to have to go in and diagnose. I would need to open up whatever shows up as an explanation point, go back through either the sketch and see what changed on the relations, build back up through that process and find out um, what, exactly, um, what exactly changed. So let's go into this front view and we'll just, well, let's go ahead and edit because this got a little complicated. So I'm okay with that. that I think we're okay with that one. We had the... Oh, that was the inside, so we haven't gotten to the ribs yet. 1.937, the 45 degree. All right, so that all looked pretty good. Uh, we were okay with the helix and spiral, and now it just goes all the way through. And then the, um, the cut sweep finds the terminating. So kind of the thing with the helix is I would rather have too much helix, as long as it's not colliding with something else and making uh, making that cut into other geometry. I would rather have too much helix than not enough. And then the actual cut sweep for the, uh, the threads. We did the, um, the boss extrude. 
for the uh, for the face and again overrunning into the geometry that is cylindrical just compensates for the uh, for the curvature and then fillets to the uh, outside setting up for the circular pattern and then let's go back into the fillet all right so that was the interior one that I missed and then also notice that there is a quarter inch at the uh, the base all right so oh I did get that one in there that was in the uh, the first part of the sketch all right so either part of the casting in setting up these ribs either part of the casting we're going to end up with uh, at least a little bit of a, a rib uh, rib there um, design for manufacturer if we are bringing this up to be a CNC part um, this is no longer going to be cylindrical I'm going to turn this into a rectangular shape or square shape and then if we need the radiuses for strength to avoid stress risers um, then I would put you know basically ball in mill I am not going to fourth axis these we're not going to get anywhere close to being cost effective if I'm making this out of a billet piece of steel all right, we're gonna we're gonna be there a while going zzz, zzz, back and forth as this this turns and makes those ribs. So at the uh, the very least, he, uh, he, you know, as far as weight, I wouldn't go straight to a cone. All right, even if you know in the steel, I uh, I can't say that I would want the the weight of going straight to a cone. But even at a cone, I could possibly make um, serrations, and then the serrations could be part of the the setup, but not have to make um, you know a bunch of really small toolpath moves so we have some decisions to make to bring this up to uh, something that is uh, easy to grip we said this is cast iron so let's find out how much this weighs so going to the um, materials uh, let's just go with oh that's expanded out to um, iron we'll just put in the uh, the gray cast iron and apply and then one of the things that's going to come up with our uh, CSWA is being able to evaluate this. So we go over to the evaluate tab, we look at its mass properties, and this is seven and a half pounds. So it's not, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's not something I want to throw around, but it's not overly, uh, overly heavy. So uh, if it came down to redesigning this more as a conical shape, and it added another five pounds to it. And then we found a, a, another more cost-effective way to remove some of that, um, that weight and that material. I'm okay with that. All right, so staying with the design. Um, so we kind of did a, a quick verification there. So we'll save that back and close it. And then same thing with the um, with the, uh, the the lifting screw all right we're going to check the uh, the revolve first so the 6.62 and the 1.94 so pretty much that was to the bottom of the threads but did not include the 0.56 all right so i want to make sure that i get the the 0.56 in there and that means that this uh, dimension goes plus point so I can put that math in, build it out, and then we'll rebuild, and I do get an error. All right, so we're going to see what um, what was generated. Everything goes to red. That's always exciting. <laughs> and either I made that way too long, so let's see what it came up with the number. Ah, so how about we control Z that since I I missed really bad. So actually, which one did I change? And why did it do all of that? Okay, so let's see what kind of uh, corner I painted myself into here. I'm going to take the worst case chance and try and close the part and discard changes. It didn't stay self-destructed. All right, so we'll try and open that up again. It goes back to normal. If I say go ahead and save it in the assembly, then um, uh, it may be a permanent change at that point. I'd have to go back and diagnose what I did. All right, so let's double check. Oh, shift plus 
and I'm on my laptop, so I think I, I just hit plus. Another one I was have to go back and watch the video and see what I told it to do because it probably was operator error. All right, so that stretches out to 7.18. Rebuild. Whew, a little better. <laughs> Yeah, that. Okay, so. Well, um, whether I do the plus 0.56 manually or have it do it, I'm going to have to come up with another number because the um, uh, whatever the the alignment at the end here is 0.56 long, and then the thread length is the 6.62. So I just went 6.62 and didn't give it enough uh, for its length. Is that why the rebuild? No, the first one I think I hit equals, and I actually gave it a, a weird number. So um, I did. I was pushing buttons. My fingers were ahead of my mouth, and I wasn't paying attention. So um, like I said, we'll go back and watch the video and go, oh, that's what I did. <laughs> All right, so that gives me something longer, but now my threads don't terminate. So on the helix and, helix and spiral, we had a length. And let's go back and double check what that number 7.18 ended up being. Because then on the helix and spiral, we're just going to overwrite that value. I could add the plus 0.56 again, but now I have a number. And then when I rebuild, the helix should terminate back at the, at the neck again. So a little bit of um, you know, razor blade then right at the, uh, the end. Uh, don't know how much of an issue that's going to be for the uh, for the model. Would expect something something different for the um, the actual machine part that we would have some tear out there, or that wouldn't wouldn't necessarily complete. Um, so one of the issues I was thinking about is as we generate these is um, the um, the square neck down is pretty much standard. But with the availability of the carbide inserts for a grooving tool being able to go to a full round, I would almost argue that putting a, um, uh, a round in there instead of the, um, the square, I'm eliminating a stress riser. And that stress riser, as much load as we're expecting this to, to possibly take, having a radius in here kind of achieves the same effect. We have something to terminate the thread into but I don't end up with this sharp edge on the interior corner. All right, so we did that, um, that quick what if on our, uh, on our sketch. So let's see what that looks like. They gave us a 0.156. And if I were to go in, let's just do the three point arc and we'll place that in position. This comes up tangent. Uh, the arc and the bottom line come up tangent, and we'll go ahead and fill those out as, well, if I let me have it, I'll fill that out as tangent. All right, so same thing that we did with the, uh, the split entities, either up to tools, sketch entities, or my split entities. I now have a third possible solution that says these can go to construction geometry. And if I mix and match, I made this probably more complicated on the mix and match, but when I rebuild, I still expect to see full revolve. All right, and wherever that thread terminates, uh, geometry can be a little bit weird, but it's not any worse than the other, and I have much more contact going into that upper, um, upper base. So I don't know if that's a, a good solution or not. We'd have to... Um, uh, put it through some FEA, and um, that one's going to take take a little practice run before we even try to to twist that um, uh, that piece with that uh, that intersecting radius. So I would say that that geometry would be about as easy to generate as the grooves. Um, just purchasing the correct insert and having it go in and do that relief. So on that end, do I want to do the same thing up here? I would just go in and modify the sketch and and see if we could build that geometry in there as well. All right, the main thing is wherever we have a corner to corner, um, so the cap coming over and, and making this uh, as a corner, I really don't want to rely on the tool as the tool degrades as we're turning this, um, this boss. 
um, that this isn't going to become more of a radius and more of an interference. My other option is on the bottom of the cap to put a heavy chamfer on the bottom of the cap and leave this a, a sharp. Still has the same issue as, as a stress riser, except this one's more in shear than it is in, in a torsional movement. All right, so at some point we get into the um, uh, the, the static, the, the dynamics of this thing. What is our load going to look like? And we think through it, even thinking through it at a very basic level, um, gets us to, to kind of that next level. We've anticipated potential problems and have a solution for them. All right, so we put the chamfer in there. Um, and I said I was still un, un, uh, unsure of that uh, 1764. So let's go ahead and zoom up on this. Okay, maybe not that much. <laughs> All right, so 875, they didn't quite, um, the, the screw ended up being 688 deep and 0.75. Even if we um, could get that uh, somehow um, internal thread on a, uh, on a lathe, very small uh, uh, threading tool, um, going right to 0.75, 60 thousandths clearance to the bottom of the uh, the screw, um, not uh, you know not a real uh, fun part to to machine holding that uh, that tight. So uh, my my recommendation is usually uh, this is a min value that the machine is it's up to the machinist to make sure that I get um, point, 0.688 of threads, and if this is tapped then. That means that this could be as much as one inch deep to take care of the lead on the um, on the tap, the um, the non-cutting uh, threads, and to get to actually full threads, if it takes a quarter inch extra, I'm okay with that. If for some reason this was going to break through, that's when we put the max notation and say, I need to have this. If you've got to grind a tap, uh, bring it to where it's uh, as flat bottom as it can be, then bring it as close to the bottom of the hole. I'm going to incur that extra expense to, to get that result. Um, but I've anticipated for it, it's not going to be a surprise. So for the, um, the 3816 and this, this turning and them not wanting to, um, uh, to have this back out unnecessarily, I would probably go with a fine thread. And the, um, uh, in that case, then the, uh, what do we have? Three eighths. Um, well, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and adjust it. Okay, so to go to the three eighths sixteen or to the three eighths twenty four. Um, that was 0.75. Again, I'm going to make that a little bit deeper. Our minimum was six eighty eight. Well, that's my screw length, so I need to be a little bit longer than that. And so I'm going to adjust those numbers, making them a little deeper. So my best guess is that I picked this as a uh, socket head cap screw as a standard length. Or we're going to make that special custom screw, and it needs to have this geometry in it that will, will give it enough clearance. I don't want to go into production on these and find out that I didn't uh, make that hole deep enough. And now I've, we've got to go back and make a correction. All right, so the 1764 that basically gets wiped out. Uh, if we were going to make that uh, some kind of pilot, then maybe it goes a little deeper. And we see what that looks like. So, okay, so going back in, it kind of gives it a double step. Um, you know, again, I don't know why I would do that. Um, other than, you know, just kind of the, again, best guess. All right, and then the chamfer was at the bottom. So my best practice says that chamfers are always last. We're going to stay with that. I'm going to go into the uh, to the front uh, plane. We'll open up the sketch. And then the 194 said that, um, oh, that's an interesting result. <laughs> okay, got lost a little bit there on the, uh, the rebuild. Um, that this is going to be centered on this boss 
And so I can draw a center line between midpoint to midpoint. And then we had the discussion about the point six, um, 11 sixteenths. So that being the case, I'm going to open up that tolerance to a 688. And actually, I can make it 690 and say, drill it, drill it with whatever you got. It's going to be fine. All right. And we get out of um, that. We're going to extrude cut. And it is going to go through all both directions. And that's going to open up our geometry. All right. Then the question is, do I pattern it? Probably not. There's, there's two. It's not like uh, there's, it's going to be that big of a deal. What I might do, though, is show this sketch so that I have the same line. And then we go into the right plane, open up a sketch. All right, so it wanted to show me from the other side. We find that same center point. Probably, um, if, if, this, if I thought this was going to change and be a problem, um, I would set a global variable because I don't really have any way to make those equal. At least I don't think I do. Got tangent. That just sounds weird. <laughs> Maybe even tangent to the... No. Nah. I'll go with the dimension. Or I'll set a global variable so that those are the same. All right, so we're going to extrude cut through all both. That gives us the pass-throughs for, uh, for the lever. We're through with the sketch. We can hide it and then roll forward. So right-clicking, I'll just roll to end. And that gives me my updated modified geometry. So the only remaining is, well, okay, two remaining is, do I put the little curved radius in here? And then what am I going to do for the neural? All right, so the, the fine neural, uh, coarse neural, uh, we don't... We can build that into the model, but if it doesn't do anything to help us with the machining or the detailing, uh, then I'm probably better off just putting an annotation on here that says, um, well, insert um, all the way at the bottom, annotation, we'll do a note view, um, find neural, Oh, and I needed a leader, so let's jump over to the leaders. And so we'll drag that out. One goes there for the surface. And then I would like to also see if I can get that extension line. Um, uh, maybe that's more of a dimension thing that I can split those, but I'm not seeing it. So on the, uh, the leaders, what I'm looking for is that we would add a secondary line and could point to both of those surfaces. I know I can do it in the drawing. Um, not sure, wasn't sure about the, um, the part. But at least that's enough of a note to come back and say, oh yeah, we were going to neural that, not just leaving it. All right, so let's go take a look at the cap. And the cap's not being shown, so we will show the cap, open up its uh, geometry. Oh, I got the cosmetic thread somehow. That's nice. We'll go ahead and edit for our shape. And we're going to double check those, those numbers for the revolve since that's about as far as we made. Um, so four inches overall, two six uh, two five. We had the two eighty two for the depth. Those all look uh, pretty familiar. The point nine, one point nine three seven. So just kind of the the quick check. I'm not seeing anything um, crazy out of the ordinary there. Uh, what about the one point three seven five? Yeah, we got that. So overall geometry pretty good. Now I need to make the decision on on the groove and what it's going to end up looking like. All right, so they're they're giving us the the basic geometry, 234, pretty close to six millimeter. It's kind of an oddball size. If I'm going to have tools ground up to make this uh, shape and put this on a tilted indexing head so that I can cut all those grooves at the five degree angle, 
I'm going to a standard size. All right, we'll find a, um, uh, a quarter inch end mill that is available through um, any of the, uh, the, the, the tool vendors and um, buy one that already has a, an 060 uh, radius on the, uh, the nose for the, for the hog nose. All right, so that I'm making a design change based on a manufacturing process, not having to do something special for just that groove. All right, so to make that happen then, uh, one more dimension that we need is 0 0.06 at the top of the groove and then 5 degree down angle. All right, so I want to, uh, we'll go into the front plane, open up the sketch. All right, save the document, that's fine. Um, oh, I got, got button heavy, should have waited till after I got out of the sketch. All right, rebuild and save. Are you happy now? There we go. Let's go into the wireframe, and basically we're coming from that corner. So I know that this is going to intersect not at the midpoint, though. <laughs> so since I went right to the midpoint, I've got to get rid of that relation. And I do want a coincident relation, but not the, uh, not the midpoint, right? Because we had that 060, and I missed my dimension, so... 0 0.06. We had a five degree down angle. All right. And then the question is, how do I want to chase this? So I think I'm just going to bring this to a termination and then make those two lines collinear, kind of like what we did on the rib. Yeah. So it Sticks it out a little bit further, but that's not, not a primary concern. All right, so that gives me my, my profile shape, which I'm more concerned about than trying to cut this from the, the top and match, um, kind of match this, um, this shape. Whatever it turns out, it turns out. I want to see something that's realistic to the geometry that I'm going to be able to manufacture, and I think I can do that with, with this uh, shape. So this extrude cut goes mid-plane. And dimension is 0.25 because I'm updating from the 234. Another 16 thousandths I can't see making a difference, but I'm going to save a bunch of money on tooling costs not having a 6 millimeter 60 thousandths ground up. All right, so there's my shape. And kind of as I expected, it's more of a, a straight through than it was um, kind of tapering towards the inside. All right, so the fun part, let's get the fillet in there because that is part of the, is going to be part of the pattern. So 0.06 and didn't need the face. All right, so let's go with just those two pieces of geometry. And that terminates back to the sharp. And 062 would overrun just a little bit, maybe not have the, uh, the same clean on the, um, the face. So we're given a dimension of 15 degrees. Between the uh, between the angles, so 30 degrees would be. Um, you know, well, had just had the brain fade. Would be uh, what 12? So we need 24. Double check my math there because I just blinked on all of that. <laughs> all right, so uh, we turned on the temporary axis last time and figured that we could. Um, um, use the uh, the face, so we'll we'll try the face on this one for a circular pattern. So circular pattern goes in direction of the revolve, and then 24. So that gives me the uh, the shape. If I turn off the uh, and turn on the instant spacing, I'm at 15 degrees, 24, um, 24 items. So the math verifies out whether I go equal spacing. You do the math or um, or the instant spacing. All right, so how does that look on the top? Interesting. So it is more of the, these little tapered backs are, but that's still, okay, I'm overthinking it. <laughs> For probably a hand-drawn uh, uh, detail, um, 
you know, I'm not expecting those to be be as close. So, all right, you're gonna let me have one of them back. There we go. So it does kind of bring it more to a taper on that wall. These are, are vertical. Either that or it's just an optical an optical thing. All right, so what else am I missing? No radiuses, interior, and on the shape. So we're ready for that, um, that threaded screw. All right, so oh, I'm still in. How did I do that? All right, so I don't want to be editing editing that. And mainly the cap is able to rotate. And now that we can um, see the, the see the geometry, that minus sign makes sense that you know it rotates, and that it's kind of what we expect it to be able to do. And then if I go over to dynamic. Then as that item turns, then we're seeing the thread go up and down. And, oh, still got that a little bit long. How did I manage that? So let's double check that thread. So the assembly is helping us out there. And I brought that. Um, oh, let's go back to the zoom. Okay, get my get something to cooperate here. All right, so 688. 875 was to the um, to the base of the screw. All right, so maybe that was to the base. All right, so another dimension I'm not picking up. Hmm. All right, so if that's one inch to the um, to the bottom of the screw, and we're putting in a clearance, but basically those would be in contact. All right, we'll have to see what I put in there. Go back to the revolve and 1.38 came from somewhere but that was probably to the top so we're going to go back to the one inch rebuild it save it and then going back into the assembly now it's a little closer but not quite there so i still have some dimensions and i'm just shy of a hundred thousandths um, on the uh, on the difference hmm. I will check that because that's where the screw head should fit. That would be the clearance. We would want a little bit of clearance then, but All right, so from face up to bottom of the screw, so let's double check the cap. Now there's my 1098, so that was either a missed dimension or no, nah, that's that's too strange to be anything but so if we need a little clearance to the um, the screw height or we work backwards yeah maybe we'll work backwards so where did that height generate from oh the 282 all right so tell me about the 282 from depth over to the bottom of that face in the cap and eighth of an inch to that face well at some point we have to make a decision so they're saying quarter inch on the overall height and that fits in and that would still be but that's not sub flush so I went, well, I went overall. Okay, so that dimension comes out. And this dimension goes in. Okay, so that whole trying to be detail-oriented sometimes catches up. <coughs> All right, so one more check. 
And then we're probably now on the two long sides. So 973. Yeah. Okay, so that makes sense. 25,000 clearance for the screw to seat and this to have some, some movement, 25,000 around. I'll buy that. Yeah, we'll see what it looks like with once we get the, um, the, the, the special screw in there. All right, so I didn't apply materials. We had on the, uh, the listing, let's go ahead and catch up with those. Cap is uh, cast iron. The machine steel, and I had to go back and look FAO finish all around. So all of the um, faces on this um, on the lifting screw are going to have some kind of uh, touch. I think that's kind of a, an older notation. I haven't seen it in a while, so we'll um, uh, we'll pick that up. So as a um, as a material readily available material, we're either going to go with a uh, 1020 cold rolled. Uh, or a 1018. We have 1020 um, available. So uh, we talked a little bit about the uh, the standards. Are you dealing with SAE Automotive? Um, uh, the what is it, the American Institute? Um, pretty much the material standards. I focus more on the last number than I am really about the governing body. All right, whoever set those because. 1020 in, in all respects should be 1020. Um, you know, whoever whoever agrees on it anyway should they should be um, similar um, uh, alloys uh, regardless. Okay, so that brings us into face, and then the top is the gray cast iron or the ductile or whatever we told it. Go back to iron, gray cast iron, fly, close, and save and close. So one of the, um, let's go ahead and get the, um, something that shouldn't give me any problems is the lever, and it's just cold rolled steel. So our, um, and it was 5 eighths by 15 inches long with an eighth inch radius at the end. So file new. Point <clears throat> six two five. Features extrude. Now I could have revolved this, but that's a quite a bit more work. And I do want to make this mid plane, mainly because. When I put this into the model, I think it's going to make more sense to uh, to set the alignment through the center of the uh, lifting screw. Radius then, we go to 0.125. And that is item. Uh, item 5, the lever. All right, so let's go back to jumping over to the screw jack. We will insert component. The lever is available. I didn't set a um, uh, a mate reference or anything to make this concentric, so I get to uh, to set all of them. I am ready to turn the origins off. So whichever one I pick will go concentric. And then what I would want to be very careful of is making this uh, this mate so when this turns it, it is able to turn the uh, the lifting screw is that I don't get one of the planes of the assembly because making that parallel or coincident it's not going to allow it to rotate I have to be on the rotating piece to maintain the rotation that seems kind of obvious saying it that way but um, there have been times where Oh, I just grabbed this and I grabbed this, and I wasn't really paying attention to the uh, to the implications, and it it sneaks up on you, you know. So just like uh, last time, where I was trying to figure out why my um, the uh, the mate reference for the screw wasn't working, and I had that uh, coincident in place, 
that one little relation was um, changing my logic. All right, so I want to make sure on the cap that, okay, the right plane, oh, not the cap, sorry. Go back to the lifting screw. There we go. So based on what I just told it, front plane is probably not a good choice since I'm perpendicular to it. Right plane, on the other hand, I'm, I'm good with that. And then the right plane of the lever, not so good. Front plane, okay. And then the choice is coincident and parallel. So let's try parallel first and see what, um, what happens. All right, so this is still in dynamic. And the problem here is that the parallel is going to allow that lever to be thrown out into space. It kind of is more representative of what can, can happen, that we would take that out and rotate. Um, but it, it doesn't make for as clean a model, in, uh, in my opinion. So the parallel, we will edit the feature. I can switch it back to coincident. And now when I go into the, the rotation, yeah, it still maybe flickers a little bit, but it's not jumping around, falling out of the, um, out of the lifting screw. All right, so 3 8 24 is what we, um, we made that, um, that retaining screw, the, the special screw. All right, so staying in the part fractional. Regardless of the of fit, well, I still have some decisions to make. So uh, main question is here is, do I build this as, and we've got a little bit of a chamfer there on the nose, that's to be expected. Um, do I build this as a cylinder in a cylinder, or do I build it as a revolve? More than likely, I'm going straight to the revolve. All right, so I can get more uh, more information uh, quicker. So 1.344 is the one that I need. Uh, we were a quarter inch high. So front plane, sketch, center line, infinite length, vertical. Uh, let's go with the, I don't know, the top, quarter inch, come down. There again, do I want to uh, deal with the, uh, the chamfer before or after? And we'll go one and 11 sixteenths, three, four, four. And escape out of the uh, the diametral, 0.25. We had the 0.688 as the thread length. And then our 3 8 24. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and put the 45 on there because that's one of those. Could jump and do something strange. And we'll see what 30 thousandths looks like. Okay, maybe 30 thousandths, not 300 thousandths. There we go. And then we'll set our major diameter to 375. Okay, let's try that again. When it jumps really big like that, I either missed a decimal point or put it in the wrong place. Okay, so even then that 375 just looks a little weird. All right, we will go from there though. So revolve. Set the base, go back into the front plane, open up the sketch. We were given a slot distance, and one of the reasons I like the top is that I can go right to mid plane. Let's get that slot designation, 0 0.94 wide, 0 0.125 deep. All right, missed it. Dimension, 0.125. 3.30 seconds, 0.094. Extrude cut. Through all both. That just looks way too strange. I had to have missed something there. 1.344. though. Hmm. Oh, that was the, uh, the canvas version. 1.344. I think 
looking at that, that that's supposed to be a three quarter sixteen fine thread. We have, um, what did we have on the diameter? 0.9. I'd say wall thickness. Well, maybe not. We lose um, 75 thousandths on the wall thickness. Hmm. It's just weird still guessing on that. 5 eighths, uh, what would we be? 5 eighths, 11, 5 eighths, 16, um, 9 sixteenths, um, 18. I really want a bigger thread in there is what I want. <laughs> All right, because that just looks that just looks weak. There's no, there's no way I can feel good about a three eighths uh, three eighths thread on that mix. All right, so let's go with a um, a five eighths and rebuild. And even that now that looks a little on the large side, just kind of roughing the scale. Nine sixteenths is an oddball. At that at that rate, I'll go right to a half twenty, readily available, easy to easy to machine. All right, so just working through my thought process, um, you know, I'm gonna gonna have to make something fly here. So this is uh, this is it. Uh, that was item. Item four. Special screw. All right, so the question again is we have a stress riser and it's not, um, uh, it's not anything intentional. We don't see any kind of radius or clearance there. Um, the, the question then is, do I put a little more of a chamfer on the cap and give it clearance? That would probably be the, uh, the easiest way because, um, if, if, even if they're going to run this down till it seats or it seats on the top, we had that 20,000. Okay. Still then want to put the, the chamfer on the thread and make that a, a, a little more of a radius as the stress riser. But five eighths going to one and one and three eighths. You know, I just look at that edge and I think, you know, as that cap, whatever it is that we're we're lifting up, if that cap rotates over, this is a prime breakage point. All right, so something to be concerned about. Resolve, bring up at design review, come up with a solution. So my immediate solution is we will put a. Um, well, maybe not a hundred thousandths. Let's see what sixty thousandths. If I put a sixteen thousandths, a sixty, yeah, sixteenth radius in there, that's going to increase the strength. It may not prevent it from shear, but it's going to deform a lot before it breaks. Oh, and then I cut it out. And then what that ends up doing on this piece is that I need to put at least the same possible chamfer. Well, in this case, chamfer is going to be easier than radius, thinking that that's going to be turned. So not a 10 millimeter, but let's go to the next one. Uh, we'll give it an 090. That looks pretty big. How about an 060 plus? <laughs> All right, so just games that we need to play to set for that relief. Okay, insert. Uh, component and like I said I, I revert back to that one pretty easily we're gonna pick up the special screw I did not put a mate reference on this one so I get to set the mates concentric we will go with coincident and then this is able to rotate well, and, all, and so is the other piece, but really I don't want it to uh, to be able to rotate uh, with the uh, with the part. Once we uh, screw that down, wherever it locks up on the uh, the threads, it's there. So inside of the mates and screw jack, we can go to this concentric, and I can lock rotation. 
So lock rotation because the mate is between the lifting screw and the special screw. Now when this rotates, they should stay, stay together. Cap is able to turn around the outside. All right, and we can test that by going back to the default. <laughs> and the mates that I added after the fact, right, because I built the configuration, I put in those additional mates. I did not tell it to apply those mates somewhere in the mix. So I'm going to have to go back and identify those. And this is part of the, um, part of the issue. So I'm going to go find my concentric through the last, and we're just going to unsuppress those. They're still valid. They just weren't added as we brought the pieces in. All right, and then everything's set to dynamic. Wherever it lined up, it lined up. And I think that's fairly representative of what I could expect in, in the part. Cap is still able to turn on the, uh, the screw. And then what I would want to see is through the front plane looks good. We'll go to the section view and we'll check the clearances. All right. So where I missed is we built uh, built all that out, and then the section view on the uh, the lifting screw said we were going to half 20. So that's kind of why that looked a little little on the strange side. We'll go back in, edit the feature, go find our geometry. So like I said, 9 16 12, 9 16 18, not as um, maybe not as common. And five eighths, just five eighths and three quarters looked a little big. So somewhere in there, we're going to find our, our mix. Still don't have a real good justification for the for the pilot, so that one just gets suppressed for now. Uh, the tap hole was attached to that same face. So if I edit edit the sketch, oh, well, it's going to make me uh, make me unsuppress, which is going to unsuppress the other. And missed. So we're going to take the coincident that was tied indirectly, directly, indirectly to the previous. All right. So the 1760 force was in place when I put that point at the the center. So this automatically became the parent. I have to remove that parent relation, and then go back in, edit the feature. Now that point's capable of moving. We'll go back to the origin and then look at it from the side. So again, the you know even with the the half twenty and a, a thread, now that um, that whole radius in here takes on a, on a new meeting because I'm I'm in, uh, engaged that far into the uh, into the part. So let's take one more look at the um, the definition here. No, I'm still okay with that one inch and 0.7.75. So, so other than than that um, that boss being in uh, in shear from the cap, um, I'm more comfortable with uh, with that geometry. If anything, I would continue the threads on further into the base and go instead of um, uh, one to one, the the diameter of the thread to the um, the thread engagement. I would maybe go two to one. So instead of um, the the eleven sixteenths of threads, make that thread one inch long so that it actually gets further into the base. And then I have both the uh, the boss and the the threaded engagement um, providing providing for that shear. All right, so time to build one and destructive test it. All right, so looking at it in section view again, we'll let it update. Uh, did my chamfer not update? Oh, and that was part of that, that whole suppression thing, so can't say that that's entirely surprising. All right, so when I highlight the chamfer, ah, okay, so since it's to the revolve and not to the 1764s, I should be able to unsuppress. That gives me the relief. And go back and pick up the cosmetic threads. Let it update. And still pretty tight on that engagement. So should have gone with the 090 because the thread is a little bit bigger than the, uh, for the major diameter, a little bit bigger than the minor diameter. 
All right, so that one we'll go in and double click. All right, we'll just go to OED and see what that looks like. All right, so I have something there anyway. All right, so what we didn't do or get into was the cosmetic thread. So I'll turn off the section. We'll go back and open. All right, so at this point, I can't really tell if this is a thread. There's no annotation or anything in here. An external thread requires, if we're going to designate it, requires that I put in an annotation. So insert, annotations, cosmetic thread. That cosmetic thread is going to go find a standard. So we can start from face or plane. Really just the outside edge is fine. In most circumstances, ANSI inch for the, uh, the standard machine thread. It finds that it is a half 20. And if I go up to next, well, we'll see what we get. So looking at it from the side, we've get, got all of that at thread engagement. We look at it from the end. Then I've got the minor diameter dash, dash, dash kind of behind the chamfer. When I'm in isometric, I may get the minor diameter, but I'm not going to get the simplified thread form through the profile. Only when we're looking at it end on, side on, uh, are we going to get those um, that, that minor diameter simplified thread. All right, that gives it enough information then, uh, I guess it applied it to the revolve, that it will add the cosmetic thread to the, um, to the mix. Is it worthwhile to go in and do a swept cut on this one? Probably not. We have enough of a call out. I've designated it. I know what the mating piece has in it. And when we bring this over into the, uh, to the drawing, we'll have at least a reminder in the annotation that it was a half 20 thread. So the question of the, um, the class of fit doesn't really get resolved in the, um, in this cosmetic thread. So we had it on the, um, the whole wizard item. And what I would expect to see then, um, I turned the annotations off somewhere, so I guess I can't expect to see. So right click, display annotations, I'll rebuild. And what I expect to see is the, no, I'm still not quite getting it. And it might be turned off in the, uh, the view as well. Basically, that my major diameter and my minor diameter of the geometry, and that sure doesn't look like it needs to be that deep. Yeah, we're back to the, the whole uh, leads on the thread. I'd rather have a little too much and be able to, um, to recognize it than not enough. So minor diameter, uh, major, yeah, minor diameter of the, um, the tap drilled hole, major diameter of the screw. I want to see that overlap. All right, so second iteration. We've been through at least that much on the, um, on the design process. Ready for drawings. I'll keep my fingers crossed on the drawings. <laughs> oh, uh, let's go with the exploded view. And we're just gonna set this up. I'm not gonna go um, too far into the dimensioning. Maybe, um, maybe we'll pick one of these and, um, and pull it out. Um, exploded view. We're going to go item, item, item. Let me have it. So I can grab all three of those. The handle, probably going to have to do something else with, but that's fine. And I want to auto space the components on drag. And we have each of those items. When I grab its direction, then those will participate in the auto spacing. Let's see if we can go back and pick up the uh, the chain, make it active. Then we got uh, 1.5 out of it. Let's see what four inches looks like. Uh, I'd like to have the screw come all the way out. So six inches. Oh, that was right. That was seven inches. So 7.5. And then the auto spacing, we can back off just a little bit, bringing them closer together. Eh, it looks all right. Notice that uh, we can pull in sub-assembly, so um, 
if um, if we're going into the exploded view and there's a subassembly and it already has an exploded view, we don't need to re-explode it. Oh, and then I didn't do anything with the lever after I said that, so we're going to edit the feature, pick the um, the lever, and just move it back some distance. It's still trying to auto space, even though there's only one item, so we can turn the auto spacing off. Uh, we'll pick a uh, dimension, two inches. All right, so at least it's not sticking through the uh, the uh, the center of the lifting screw, and we'll save that. All right, so the other question then: Did, did I apply materials to everything? Um, Ten twenty, cast iron, the special screw. No, so from here, ten twenty. Yes. The lever, 1020. And what I'm interested then in doing that, we'll go ahead and save, let it update, go back into the evaluation, mass properties for the whole, whole unit. We're now to 14 and a half pounds. Is that manageable for a jack that size? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Getting this into the drawing, we can go make drawing from an assembly, and then it's going to ask us which one we want. And so let's go with, um, well, we haven't used the sidebar yet. One of the advantages of the sidebar, or the reason that I create the sidebar, is that it gives me a little more vertical content. So the isometric. Uh, let's see, we're going to check the scale. So it's set to sheet scale, and that's 1 12th. So maybe not quite uh, that much. Oh, and then I, I still forget that I don't have to go to properties. That on the bottom here, we can find a about one fifth. That doesn't look too bad. One half is probably not going to get it there. So I would like to maybe, eh, we'll go with the one fifth. Once we put in the bill of materials, that's going to pull, um, pull a little bit more. Right click, tables. Bring in a bill of materials. We'll stay with the, the standard. I'm not going to get too deep into go to the anchor. We have descriptions, other items. Part number is the file name. So one of the things I typically do is replace part number with file name and save the bill of materials template. And it came in as the dimension detail. And then we can auto balloon. Um, auto balloon could be left or right on this one. I think uh, would work pretty good. Grab the magnetic line. Oh, we need to apply it. Highlight. Grab the uh, the magnetic line, and we'll adjust accordingly. And almost made it a nice one, two, three, four. And then we can also bring in from our view palette and let it go ahead and refresh. Um, not the isometric exploded. How about just the isometric? Okay, if I have to bring in the isometric exploded, we will bring that one in. I will turn off the exploded checkbox, and that puts it back into the normal assembly view. All right, so I have the exploded. This is how it goes together. This is what it looks like. Next sheet, not worrying about names and everything in the details. Now we can split the window. Uh, which one didn't we? Well, we don't need the lever. So we'll split the window. I can stay vertical is fine. And we have the next sheet. So the stand comes in. How many do I want? Uh, we'll go ahead and bring in everything. Accept it. Scale is probably pretty close. Maybe not perfect. Lifting screw. Pretty sure I only need a couple of those um, size wise. Yeah, let's just go with the uh, the two views. And actually, since I want an in view, we'll go with the, uh, the diameter. The only thing is if I'm going to rotate this and would like it laying kind of horizontally, I need this view more than I need that view. So since I'm undecided, I'm going to put it in there and delete the one that I don't I don't need. The cap kind of runs into the same thing. Uh, 
the lever. Well, shouldn't be too much on the lever, so. And then what was the uh, the last one? Should have been the um, the special screw. All right, and then basically because of the diameter of the revolve, and there is our half twenty machine threads note, even though it's kind of in the the strange uh, strange view. All right, so I've populated those out. I have to adjust for scale. I have to put some dimensions on, but for the most part, I've gone through and set up the drawing. Not sure if that looks like one of the um, the references, so I'm not sure what that. Um, oh, and coincident, coincident. Nice. I have no idea what that is. Got a screen anomaly. <laughs> All right, so we go through. We would pick these uh, dimensions up, go through the rest of the um, rest of the sheets, finish out our working drawing.